Hi guys, this is your girl Wakeji Kamore and welcome to Reflections by Wakeji Kamore. <laughs> We are currently going through the book of 1 Samuel. We are doing this chapter by chapter. So it will be nice for you to listen to the end because I'll be sharing my key takeouts from the chapter which we'll be reading today at the end of this recording. Also, remember to subscribe, to share this with someone else and to click the notification bell so that you never miss any new recording. So in the book of 1 Samuel, we are still in chapter 22 because I decided to do this in two parts. So today I'm going to be reading chapter 22 from verse 11 all the way to verse 23. And then we're going to, I'm going to share the, the takeouts from, from this at the end. So kindly follow through the story. All right, let's see. So what has happened so far in, in the first part of, of um, verse chapter 22 is that David has gone to hide in caves and now his brothers have come and also an army of 400 people who are not necessarily the best shaped. They are rough, they are rough edged people. And then also Saul has, has figured out where, where David is. And then this guy called Doeg the Edomite has snitched and said that Saul, that David was talking to Ahimelech the priest. All right, so let's read. This is verse 11. King Saul immediately sent for Ahimelech the priest and all his family who served as priests at Nob. When they arrived, Saul shouted at him, Listen to me, you son of Ahitab. What is it, my king? Ahimelech asked. Why have you and the son of Jesse conspired against me? Saul demanded. Why did you give him food and a sword? Why have you consulted God for him? Why have you encouraged him to kill me as he is trying to do this very day? I don't know where... Saul is getting this notion that David is trying to kill him. Why is he getting this from? Like the guy is running. How is he trying to kill you? Anyway, he says, But sir, Ahimelech replied, Is anyone among all your servants as faithful as David, your son-in-law? Why he is the captain of your bodyguard and highly honored member of your household. That was certainly not the first time I had consulted God for him. May the king not accuse me and my family in this matter, for I knew nothing at all of any plot against you. Which is true, because you remember when um, David went to the, the priest, he actually said, I have come on, my, on the king's um, assignment. And so he, he went there in pretense. So I met, I met, like, didn't even know that David was running away from Saul. Uncle Jesus told his daughter. So he was just like, but I always consult the Lord for you guys and for him. And me, and he's the most trusted person in your household. He's the most faithful person in your household. So me, I didn't suspect anything. So I didn't do anything wrong. So don't accuse me and my family in this matter. For I knew nothing of any plot against you. You will surely die, Ahimelech, along with your entire family. The king shouted and he ordered his bodyguards, kill these priests of the Lord for they are allies and conspirators with David. They knew he was running away from me, but they didn't tell me. But Saul's men refused to, king, to kill the Lord's priests. Yani Saul is willing to kill all the priests. Like, gosh, all the priests. Like, wow, okay. But his bodyguards have refused. Then the king said to Doeg, this Doeg guy, you do it. So Doeg, the Edomite, this guy is just simpendi, me simpendi. <laughs> so Doeg, the Edomite, turned on them and killed them that day. Not one, not two, not three, 85 priests in all. Still wearing their priestly garments. Eh, Aki Doeg, my goodness. Then he went to Nob the town of the priests, and killed their priests' families, men and women, children and babies, and all their cattle, their donkeys, their sheep and goats. This dog guy, uh, Uyu, he has a special place in hell. He has a special place in hell, to be honest. Like, how do you go killing priests, 85 of them? And as if that is not enough, you go back to the village and you kill their families, their children, their wives, their cattle, their donkeys, their sheep, their goats. Like, are you crazy? Are you on drugs? Like, Ukosawa, Doeg, are you okay? <laughs> Only Abithar 
one of the sons of Ahimelech escaped and fled to David. Now, one of them has even gone to David. When he told David that Saul had killed the priests of the Lord, David exclaimed, I knew it. When I saw Doeg the Edomite there that day, I knew he was sure going to tell Saul. Now I have caused death to all your father's family. Stay here with me and don't be afraid. I will protect you with my own life. For the same person wants to kill us both. And that is the end of that chapter. Like, my goodness. Where? Saul. And this guy called Doeg, the Edomite. Where, 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 where? They're just on steroids, to be honest. So this chapter, I have noticed, or rather this part of this chapter, I've noticed that how, how Saul's jealousy and anger has blinded him. And he has, it's made him justify to his mind the killing of innocent people. Like he's so angry at, at David. He's so jealous of David that he's, he has justified it in his head or in his mind that it's okay to kill these guys because in his head they are conspiring with David because that first it's not even true he has imagined that they are conspiring with David he won't even listen to reason and he's decided let's kill all of them not just one but 85 priests together with their wives their families their children their cattle sheep and donkey so here is a question that i have for you is there any unresolved anger or jealousy that make you justify your sin is there any un, any any unresolved anger especially anger let's say when you're angry at someone when you're angry at someone at wakigongwa na kitu you're just like let them be hit or <laughs> like when something bad happens to them you're just like yeah they deserve it because you're so angry at them that that now makes it you justify sin and when you're so angry at someone and you start doing bad things to them, you start treating them badly, and you actually justify that in your mind because you're so angry at them because they wronged you in some way or they whatever it is that they did, you're angry at them or you're jealous of them. And you start justifying the sins that you're doing against them. Are you angry or jealous of a co-worker, of a sibling? Sometimes it can be siblings because this one is doing better than the other. So now you're so angry, you're so jealous you know, or a neighbor. And this anger and this jealousy is causing you to justify the bad things that you're doing to them. Sometimes we feel like anger, that we feel like the anger we have against someone justifies us to hurt them back. So what sin have you allowed in your life? And what is the root cause of that sin? Is it jealousy? Is it pride? Is it greed? Just confess it. Then move forward in the grace and mercy that God has given us through Christ Jesus. So that's my challenge. Ask yourself, are you, is there any unresolved anger, jealousy, pride, greed that is making you justify the sins that you're doing and how you're treating that specific person that you're angry with? Is there anything that you have allowed in your life because you feel, ah, me, I'm justified to do this because this person wronged me or this person is doing better than I am or this person is doing... My challenge is confess it. You interrogate yourself, confess it, then move forward in the grace and mercy that God has given us through Christ Jesus. This is your girl Wakeji Kamore and this has been Reflections by Wakeji Kamore. See you tomorrow.